So I was scheduled to speak at Yale. I was invited by Professor Nicholas Christakis and his wife, Erica, um, to speak to their students at Silliman uh, House or College. It's basically just a fancy name for the, the dorms at Yale, but they tried to be educational dorms. Right. Um, and I was invited way back in the spring to, to, to speak there about freedom of speech. Um, I was invited before I'd actually published The Coddling of the American Mind, which was all about overreactions to speech, about uh, cognitive distortions, you know, right. essentially about the idea that students are catastrophizing, right. that they're engaged in magnification and personalization and have no sense of proportion when it comes to some of these issues. And so I show up on campus and lo and behold, uh, the campus is completely in turmoil over this email that Erica Christakis had sent to her students at Silliman, and it was a very reasonable email um, responding to, and the, here, the, here, part of the context here is that since way, since way back in, in 2010, Halloween has been risky business on college campuses. And, you know, I always give the example of the uh, chief of police at Syracuse University warning students that they would be asked to take off their costumes and judicial char charges filed against them if they were found wearing offensive costumes, which is a bizarre image to begin with. You know, the idea of like, I, I demand you strip right now is just completely <laughs> freak, freak, freaked out. But I always kind of thought that uh, the students themselves, and the students, by the way, traditionally in my experience, had been the constituency on campus that had their heads most firmly planted on their shoulders. Right. The administration have o has always been a problem. Sometimes professors aren't all that helpful, right. but students seem to have an uncommon amount of common sense. But something's changed. So. Erica sends out this, so uh, the, the Intercultural Studies um, uh, Department sends out uh, an email, and you know, it's, it, it's a nicer version of, of warning people about what to, what, right. what to wear, but saying like, you know, be sensitive about what you wear for Halloween, and you shouldn't wear this, and, and ask yourself these questions. And Erica wrote a very thoughtful email saying, listen, you know, I, are, are we really this, do we really lack this much confidence in our students? Is it really my place to tell students what they should wear for Halloween? Isn't part of Halloween, isn't part of the idea of Halloween to be a little bit transgressive? Isn't it, you know, isn't it uh, the idea of it to, you know, play with ideas? And aren't we showing disrespect to student autonomy? And if I could just interject before you go on, yeah. I read that email. Yeah. And I mean, it couldn't be more sort of gently worded so it wasn't sort of bombastic yeah, or exactly. belligerent or bellicose uh, so yeah so go on so I, I, I vouch for the the gentility yeah. of, of the message yes and of course it would still be protected even if it wasn't but it, it, it just again just makes it more ironic right. so when I showed up you you would have thought something some kind something horrible had happened. I'll explain more about that later. But because you know, I got to see and I got to actually record a confrontation between her husband, Nicholas Christakis, a tenured yes. professor at Yale, um, and dozens of angry students who were shouting at him, who were demanding that he be fired, who were uh, one of them broke down into tears about it. They were swear and swearing at him. They were the, the, yeah, oh yeah, right, right to his face. They were saying, how can you sleep? You're disgusting. And I mean, I was only able to capture a little tiny bit of it on video. Um, and, and, oh, and someone, by the way, is saying, it's like, oh, those are edited. I'm like, no, no. I directly uploaded all I had and sent them right out. I think there was one that showed me like that I accidentally like videotaped just the ground for six seconds. It was the only one we didn't, because, you know, I'm an old man. I, right. I'm not, I'm, not the, I'm not the best of the phones. I didn't even hold it in the right position, as you can probably tell from the videos, right. which I've been made fun of for. But yeah, those are the entirety of what I was able right. to get. And, and honestly, in total context, it was much worse right. than it looked in those videos. Um, so I thought this was just completely unhinged. I thought this, this was such a disproportionate response. And having just written an article about you know students um, acting out of proportion, acting in magnification and emotional reasoning, um, you, you know, I, I, I couldn't believe how bad it was. And I've been, I've been on the ground floor for you know, debates over the Muhammad cartoons right. that were much more civil um, right. th th than what I saw. So, and particularly the calls for him to resign. There was an article in the Yale Daily Herald, which they've since taken down, by the way, um, saying saying that, that that both of the Christakis's should uh, should resign. Now, I had to explain to you know I, I need everyone to understand that even though right now um, I, I haven't heard Yale say we're going we're we're investigating whether or not we should terminate the Christakis's, um, you know, either from their positions at Yale or as professors. In my experience. That those discussions are happening behind the scenes, and what 
And what they're going to want it to look like is that the Christakis's came to this decision on their own, maybe maybe not this week, but maybe in a couple of months, that they just decided, oh, we've decided to move move on from Yale. Um, I've seen this happen. I've been doing this since 2001, and that's why we really need to mobilize people to uh, right. to, to write Yale and be civil, be right, sensible, be reasonable. Um, but to tell them, it's like, listen, if the, the you should make it clear that the Kurtzakis's did something good, they provoked a discussion, and they should stay. They belong at Yale. And I mean, frankly, I mean, not that what I'm about to say next is relevant to the issue. But uh, certainly Nicholas is a astonishingly respected uh, scientist. Again, not that that has any bearing oh. one way or the other, but he's, he's certainly a, an asset to the university. And yeah. uh, although I don't know him personally, I know his, his constant co-author, uh, James Fowler from UCSD. Mm. Uh, I mean, the way he responded uh, when he was, I mean, to some extent, almost physically threatened, right? I mean, it was physically intimidating to see all these young folks sort of surrounding him in a very ominous manner. I mean, I was astonished that you could actually be this calm, this I, restrained, right? I mean, it's, so it's funny because one of the videos that came out that I didn't take that, that's just come out, I think was trying to sort of portray him as as being as starting to lose his temper. But I have to say that was at the end of him defending himself for hours. And I watched some of the things that wasn't caught on videotape was when he'd be talking to an individual student and they'd be say, they, they, uh, and the students behind him would say, look at us, don't look, don't turn your back on us. Yeah. And then when he did that, the student that he was talking to would, would start saying, uh, look me in the eyes. And it's right. like, I can't actually do both. Right. And I don't want to be yelling at the, So there was no way he could, he, he, he could, could win in this circumstance. Yeah. So the, so the fact that I think he showed extraordinary patience, right. all, all things considered. And I was frustrated. I was shocked. I was upset. And, and you know, having having done this for such a long time, um, it takes a lot to shock me. But this was this was completely disproportionate to what was going on. So the next day, when I was at a, I got invited to speak at a panel on freedom of, on the state of freedom yeah. of speech. Again, coincidentally, right. um, and it was for the Buckley program. And I was in a room full of, for the most part, you know, older white conservatives who I honestly think did not believe me. Um, that this this had happened. Now uh, to explain what, but the statement that got that that, that uh, apparently you know got me in trouble, so to speak, um, I should explain that my dad grew up in Yugoslavia. Um, uh, I worked in refugee camps. I always when 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 my friends complain about you know I always expected to have uh, to be wealthy when I was older. Or I always expected to have a lake house when I was older. And these are real things that I have from friends who grew up wealthy. I always say, well, my perspective was always I'm really glad Nazis didn't destroy my village today. <laughs> And, you know, I grew up with horrible, horrific stories, and I developed a dark sense of humor around it right. to, as a coping mechanism sure. for working in refugee camps. Right. So to try to – and, and I, so I'm always amazed at the lack of perspective of students. So I really tried to put a fine point um, on this to a, uh, uh, to a skeptical uh, audience because they, they, they didn't understand. They, like someone was saying – there was someone in the front audience saying, "Are you wait, I don't – you didn't finish the story. What, what happened after the email? I'm like, no, the email was the issue. Right. And I said, given the response to Erica Kurstakis' email, you would have thought that she wiped out an Indian village. And I was really trying to bring it home. And right. really, you know, I, I was trying to say this a simple way, a, a dramatic way of saying this is a complete overreaction. Right. People were really – and – I kind of overachieved apparently in my attempt to sort of provoke a reaction because a student suddenly I noticed that a student was yelling at me and putting and, and putting up posters and and I didn't really entirely see what was going on. Then I saw him you know, when they asked him to to, to leave uh, because I couldn't I couldn't keep talking. That he really you know uh, he, he 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 told the. Um, uh, the security guard that he was only he, he would only be carried out, and then he sort of like lunged at the stage, yelling uh, to me something about how I don't know my history, which was particularly ironic because I'm like, actually, no, I do know my history. That's why I, I tried to come up with the worst possible thing right. I could think of, the most evocative thing I could think of to make the point that this is the way students are acting, and it's showing a complete and total lack of right. uh, perspective. But it got even worse after that. Apparently, a message went out that someone had made a, 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 a joke about genocide. I'm like, no, I made a joke about lack of perspective. And then apparently dozens of students showed up. I'm not sure how many, but with signs already written saying genocide is not a joke, hashtag. And they started, and apparently, at least according to some of the students, they spit on multiple students um, who were at the Buckley conference. I mean, like this, that, that's assault. Like that, that's obviously not, not, not protected. 
Um, so I, I was, again, just completely flabbergasted by the entire thing. And so, I mean, so is it, is, are they trying to do anything to you or are you out of their reach? I mean, they can go after the, the uh, Nicholas and his wife, but, are, you know. There's not a lot they can do to me. I, I, th there was a little bit of murmurs, um, and, I'd, and I'd be interested to see Yale try this, but saying that I had not gotten permission to videotape on, uh, on Yale's campus. Um, and I'm like, if you really want to go with that argument, you know, I was covering what looked like it was going to get ugly. And, I, and the main reason, really, why I knew I had to videotape it was because I have seen situations like this go down so often, and if they're not on tape, Right. And students really want to get rid of a professor. They will claim things happened that didn't happen. It's cynical, wow. but it's also true. Okay. If you're that determined to get rid of a professor, and, and anything's possible. So you know they they can portray me as a, you know as a villain as much as they want. I I I I can live with that. But I also think it's amazing that they that, that a lot of times people don't give anyone the benefit of the doubt or know. Sure their family history. It's like, yes, I was trying to think of the single most horrible thing I, I, I could right. think of to, to say this is the way they're reacting. But, um, but the, the case seems, to, the interesting thing is the students seem to have shifted their attention um, at least in the past couple of days. There, there, there's been like a day of outrage yesterday at Yale, but in this case they were focusing on allegations that a fraternity had um, turned away, or at least a fraternity member had turned away uh, black women from getting into the fr getting into the party, perfectly legitimate thing to protest. Sure. Um, and if they're focusing on something like that, and they're not focusing on the Christakis's, I think that's you know, f for lack of a better term, progress. But but I really just have to stress again, uh, you know, people have to have to get active. They have to write Yale, particularly exactly. if they're Yale, Yale alumni, and they have to say the Christakis's need to stay. These are the kind of people we need. And we also really have to think about how what 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 cognitive behaviors we're teaching students. Because if if there is this um, immediate desire to anytime you hear anything that makes you uncomfortable to shut it down, to spit on people, to shout in their face, to make sure they never say it again, that is exactly the opposite of what a university should be teaching.